And we're live on all platforms. Thanks so much, everybody. This is Harriet Kimmerich with Down to Earth. It's the show in which we talk about the issues that matter. And today on our show, we're going to talk about something that I had to think about seriously before even preparing for the show. And it's about money. It's about how big philanthropy uses their philanthropy. Is it a tool of the rich that they use or are they really philanthropic? Are they really believing that they should give back? So we're going to talk about this and explore it in just a few. But first, I wanted to think you should give a shout out to the folks who continue to listen to us from around the world. We have folks in Ireland, Namibia, South Africa. I don't know how you guys do it, but I just wanted to tell you. Thank you. Folks in Bangladesh and India and folks out in Nigeria. How do you all do that? But thank you so much for continuing to be a part of my experience. I gather that some of you in Nigeria, for instance, are people who have been listening to me for going on more than 10 years. So I wanted to say thank you. At some point, I might make it to Nigeria. (laughs) We'll see. (laughs) We'll definitely see about that. But thanks, everybody, for tuning in and joining us on this fine Monday. I'm happy to report that it's 34 degrees in Metro Detroit. Somebody give a shout out. It means the snow is melting and it means underneath all that snow is a lot of leaves that I need to go get uh, blown away, scraped up or whatever. But I'm also a firm believer that if you leave the leaves underneath that, then it's gonna ferment and compost so that by the time the snow finally goes away in late April or so, guess what we're gonna have? nice green grass i don't think it's gonna kill the grass off i think we need to leave it so you know we've just i think most of us clear it is is it we clear it so it won't get into the drains or something right so it won't block your drains but i think leaving the leaves is a a, a, and it just makes me think that summer will come back (laughs) i think that's my problem (laughs) my problem is that i want summer back anybody else like me who wants summer back i do i do i think when I realized that the snow was melting yesterday and I looked out and I saw it, I can't begin to tell you how I felt. <laughs> my hands are always dry, so I keep moisturizers. I, my hands always feel dry. So I moisturize them like a hundred times a day. But you know what? I wash my hands like 200 times per day. But I, I just want summer to come back. So if there's anyone out there with me who can believe, let us all believe that summer will return hastily and that I can get to wear flip-flops again and go get my toes done and walk around in flip-flops. I mean, I had a ball this summer. I wore exactly what I wanted to wear. I wore shorts. I wore uh, swimsuit cover-ups without swimsuits. Anyway, we won't talk about that. (laughs) Right? I mean, I know my neighbor because, you know, most of the time I would wear it if I'm driving. So I'm like, I'm not coming out of the car. So nobody's going to be shocked. And then you get down the road and you're like, oops, I think I need to go in the grocery store. So you start looking, make sure no one sees you. And you're like, I don't know who's going to see me. Then you walk into the grocery store in your swimsuit cover up and they have this big mirror thingy, even in the pharmacy. And you're like, no, they don't. No, not today. So you pull your sunglasses down on your head and you're like, but then you walk out and you're like, well, it's summer. <laughs> so I'm going to keep the leaves on my grass for summer as a reminder of summer. I haven't even taken my plants off the porch. I'm like, nope, I want summer, right? So today we're going to talk about big philanthropy and what that means. And I want to talk about it as many of you are joining us. I want to talk about it. Good morning, everyone. It's so nice to see you folks joining me. And and can you do me a favor? Continue to download and listen to my podcast on Google Podcasts, on Apple Podcasts, and on Spotify. We're on a variety of podcast platforms. Many people listen to us through Blog Talk Radio as well. So we're continuing to bring the message that we want to bring, the message of change, the message that you can get through what you're going through, while at the same time informing you, while at the same time hopefully entertaining you, (laughs) right? So, so even I myself, I go back to some of the, the, the podcasts and occasionally I will say, cause something you have to, you know, you have to examine yourself. 
And sometimes I'll be like, wow, I never knew that. I didn't even know I knew that while I was speaking. But today I wanted to talk about big philanthropy as a tool of the rich. And last night I was on Twitter, and I don't know if you all saw this, but there was a Twitter thread going about what is a mil who is a millionaire as opposed to who is a billionaire. And what is the difference between a millionaire and a billionaire? And I wanted to put some, it brought some clarity and a reminder to me because so many of us walk around and you think you're all right. You think you're big pimping. You know, you ever seen those people? Most millionaires today are small business owners. So you have a lot of net worth on paper, but if the paper goes away, you're obliterated. So a lot of people, their business, you know, their assets, that is their net worth, but don't, they don't have a million dollars in the bank. So they have to keep working. We're all keeping working at the business to continue to make it. So a lot of people have a misconception and a lot of people live off credit. So attached to your business is a line of credit. So you have a credit card from the same bank or other banks and you're like, shit, I can afford that $300 bill from Gucci. And heck yeah, I can pay $500 for those gym shoes for my kid. Of course I can. I have it or just here's a credit card, just boom. And a lot of people mistakenly believe that that is wealth. Rich people don't use credit like that. They buy stuff and own it, right? Rich people, when they're making investments, use other people's money. This is where the advent of IPOs come in. You know what is an IPO? Initial public offering. When they want to expand their company, they go to the public and they take money from the public. They're not going to use their money to do it, right? So rich people have a different concept of money and how money is used. Hence, we call it big philanthropy. So a very wealthy person creates a foundation and the tenets of that foundation is to do what? Is to give away money. That's what you would think, right? But the foundation gives them political power because they, a lot of wealthy people hide their wealth, their cash on hand in a foundation. It's tax free. They don't pay taxes on it, right? They're incorporated under the tax laws. They don't pay taxes on it but it also gives them political power. So they choose the projects that they want to. Somebody said this, that big philanthropy, listen to this, this is a quote, is a way of the ultra rich cleansing their hands of the dirty ways that they make money. Years and years ago, the Carnegie's, the Vanderbilt's, the Rockefeller's, when they made a lot of money, they set up a foundation. This is where this quote came from a hundred years ago, right? And they would set up a foundation ostensibly to give back to the community, right? Hence they supported the arts and, 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 and music and science because the government couldn't do enough. Then the government started crying that, man, I don't collect enough taxes to do it. So the government taxed people like you and I, wealthy people, let me just put this into perspective. Reaganomics created the billionaire class because before in history, we never had billionaires. You had what was called the marginal tax structure where rich people paid the tax on the excess of what they made. So they made, made, paid taxes on the 80%, not on the 20%. Are you clear on that? Then Reaganomics came in and rich people stopped paying taxes on their 80%. So cumulatively, you make more money. You're not, the more money you make is the less taxes you pay. Hence the reason why, as much as I love Amazon because it's convenient to shop, Jeff Bezos paid zero dollars in taxes last year because of the tax code brought in by Reaganomics. Now you have the, the Trump administration who further exacerbated that so rich people don't pay any taxes at all. So the burden is on us. So for all those of us who are walking around and we think we are millionaires, I suggest we all go back and examine our finances just a little bit and really think about it because we're living off credit and we're living as if that is the real thing. If, if that were, if, if the bank were to come after you and you had a few bad months, what would that mean for your business? Would you still be a millionaire? Because many wealth, many people who are millionaires still carry a mortgage on your house. 
your cars are not owned by you. There are very few people in America who believe that you should have a car that you don't pay a note on. I'm one of them. Most people, you want the latest and the greatest, the latest and the greatest, because you got to show off to your friends that you're making it. So they go out and they take out a heavy car loan and they buy it. Many people don't even own the land that their business sits on. I am amazed when I drive through small towns in America and I see places up for rent and I'm like, all this time you never owned the place? Because we're big pimping. The minute you start making a little money, the first thing you go out and do is what? Buy a bigger house and a bigger car to show your friends that you have arrived. And all you're doing is sinking yourself further in debt, making yourself in debt. This is why my grandmother used to say it like this, and I kid you not, she used to say, don't envy anyone for what they have because you don't know what means they contrive to make it. So I don't envy anybody for what they have because I don't know what it's costing you at night to stay up to make it. A lot of people obtained their wealth by nefarious means. One of the ways that a lot of people were drug dealers. I kid you not. They were drug traffickers. And then they cleaned up the money. They started buying property. That's one of the quickest ways. I kid you not. This is just a reality. Until eventually they moved so far away from that that now they're just a businessman. Within 10 years, you describe him as a businessman. But how did he get started? Does it really matter? As long as he's not hurting anybody. I'm not even against people anymore. Because I don't, the way the system is structured, it's difficult. I just hope he owns his stuff. I just hope he owns the big pimping house and the cars. So if they ever come calling, you own it. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? So now we're looking at big philanthropy. Like Bill Gates owns a foundation. He puts a lot of his money into that foundation because he says he wants to do the projects that he finds near and dear to his heart. In a way, it's kind of controlling governments because his foundation exerts a lot of influence around the world. Maybe not so much here in the US, but around the world. He goes into other countries and he offers to help them discover alternative sources of energy. He's influencing public policy. Is it meaningful on the ground? Yeah, if you're going to affect the lives of people on the ground. But the real question we're really asking is, when did being a billionaire become a thing? And somebody was saying on Twitter last night, we've forgotten basic math, that a millionaire is just somebody who has a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars times a thousand. Okay, just add the zeros. Well, a billionaire is somebody who has a thousand millions. Right? So what created the billionaire class? The tax structure created the billionaire class. And now billionaires today, well, at least we have the Carnegie's and the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilt's and so on. Billionaires today tend to be very selfish. They don't put up money in foundations. They might start a foundation and give them $2 million. Well, you have like almost 98, $980 million left to you do something. You see what I mean? Because the more money is a drug. The more money you have is the more you want. And you find the more money you have is the more influence and power you have. This is why when people start telling you to be poor and start glorifying poverty, you need to walk away from that. Because poverty is its own evil. All of us should strive to be wealthy. I don't know what it's gonna cost. I don't know what it takes. For some of us, the barriers and impediments to wealth are stricter than others. There are some of us who have to take out student loans to go to school, right? And to go to college. So by the time you graduate, you are inundated with student loan debt, which means it's going to take you longer, five to 10 years to get started. Hey, do you see where I'm coming from? But whatever it takes, you have to look at the long term. Be just like an investor. When you're investing, you look at the long term. I think we have to make the rich richer to become rich ourselves. Is that a thought? Maybe. But are they sharing their wealth? Wealthy people do not give away their money to other people to make you wealthy. They identify a need and they think those people deserve, you know, need to be helped and they do it. Right? Well, spend money to make money. That's your idea. Okay. 
spend money to make money. I also find that you have to have grit to stay in the game and use help from investors. Well, that's what wealthy people do. They use what is called OPM, other people's money, using investors' money, right? So it, 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 we need to look at it from the point of view then, well, if it works for Bill and it works for Elon Musk, and it certainly seems like it's working for Jay-Z. You know Jay-Z? You know who is Jay-Z? The black guy, the rapper, who was a rapper, but and who used to sell drugs to his own mother, right? And all of a sudden now, he's cleaned up. Nothing wrong with being positive and moving forward. But now, he's going to become part of the structure, the power structure, that is going to attack Colin Kaepernick. Like seriously, so now they're you're, you're you know they're they're trotting you out and using you to tear down another black person, right? Good, for, see, good for him, I suppose. Yeah, they pay you, so you know he got paid to do that because he's not gonna do that without them guaranteeing him something, right? Those kinds of things. He's an agent, <laughs> right? He's now an agent. So now he's just as much, he's just become like an Uncle Tom. Yeah, and you can go tell him I said that. I don't care. But that's what it is. Not if you're going to go after somebody who is trying to look at the situation and say, there's a way in which we can fix it. And then now you as a black man, you're going to go after the power structure and say he's using the NFL. You got a big contract with the NFL. I would have respected him if he didn't get a contract with the NFL. So after he signed the contract with the NFL, I guess part of the contract with the NFL was for him to go after Kaepernick. But outside of those things, right, he is many high-profile athletes' agents, such as Des Bryant. Now look at that. I didn't know that. Thanks for telling me. I did not know that, right? But, but do you see what I'm saying? So in looking at how did we create billionaires, it's a unique phenomenon. It, it, America has more billionaires than anybody else. We also have more millionaires than any other country, right? So we have a lot of millionaires here, especially New York City. Uh, and, and there's a map on the internet you can go look at that can show you where a lot of millionaires live. So we have more millionaires than anybody else on the planet, and we certainly have more billionaires. There are billionaires who live in other parts of the world. There are people from Nigeria who are billionaires. There are people from India, I don't recall seeing anyone from Pakistan, but there are people from from in, uh, from India. Of course, China is not going to tell us anything, so we don't know, right? But how did we create this group of people for whom excessive wealth? You know what that tells us? They're going to continue to influence the political spectrum, and they're going to continue to appoint people who specifically look out for their own interests. If I were a billionaire, do you think I would want someone in charge of the country who is not going to make me richer or who is going to come in with some idea that they don't think we should have billionaires? No. I'm going to find a way to what? Influence the political system, aren't I? Exactly. Because I want to continue to be a billionaire. I think we have forgotten how to think. A huge problem is the millionaires driving the cost of living through the roof in sought after places you really want to talk about that don't you why don't you do? talk about it talk about how expensive it is to live in san francisco for example if you're not a millionaire you can't live in san francisco the the, the homeless population in san francisco is higher than anywhere else in the country because a lot of people who used to go to work can't afford to live there Wow. Help me out, my friend. Help me. Help me to tell the people. Because when I talk, they probably think that, oh, Harriet is just saying stuff. But help us to help the people. Tell them what you know. And I'm going to repeat what everything you say. Because it is true. Think about it. Friends, do you own a house? Stop paying rent on an apartment. Go buy a house. Home ownership is the first step in acquiring wealth. Stop living in a high-rise apartment that you're paying $2,500 a month in rent for. Go buy a house. You might not be able to own a home in the sought-after neighborhood, especially for you young people graduating from college. You're in your 30s and you're delaying having children 
because you say, I don't have the time. And you're telling yourself, you don't have the time. You don't have the money, blah, blah, blah. But look at your lifestyle. You're spending 25, 18 to $2,500 a month on somewhere you will never own. You're paying $500 a month on a luxury car just because you want to show off to your friends. And you're still paying $500 a month on your student loans. Go buy a house. My mother told me this years ago and I didn't listen and I paid the price for it. In places that people want to live, there are two types of people. Do you see, somebody said yesterday on Twitter, they said, look at it this way. Would a billionaire live in the same neighborhood as somebody who is valued at $250 million? And the rest of us were like, no, they wouldn't. Those with three plus houses and those with three plus jobs. Hello, would you say it so loudly for those in the penny section to hear? My friend on, on, on Twitter just said the correct thing. The difference between people who have and don't have, people who have three plus houses and people who have three plus jobs. Think about it. I want that to settle in for a minute while we sit there and you look at your credit card statement and you start thinking about how you're going to buy this ear pod and how you're going to buy this stuff and how you're going to buy this to show off to your friends that you have made it. I want us all to listen to that. I want us all to think about that. How many houses do you own? My friends, it's time to start being rich. Having three jobs is modern day slavery at its finest. Man, I'm telling you, this, this, this timeline is on fire this morning. Are you all reading this stuff and listening to what people are saying? Having three jobs is modern day slavery. We need to start thinking like my, 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 my viewer here on Twitter, you heard what he just said. Three plus houses or three plus jobs. Pick your choice, which one you're gonna have. We stopped thinking in terms of acquiring property. They don't want you to acquire property. The system is not built for you to think uh, morally or to think equitably. No, the system is as voracious as it can be. It's only capitalism when you need to have three plus jobs but it's socialism for the rich because they're not paying taxes. You gotta think about that. Amazon did not pay taxes last year. Where's the outrage? You know where the outrage should be? At Amazon for not paying taxes, but there's no outrage at Amazon. None whatsoever. You know what we're worried about? We're worried about that the 15 year old kid who was harassed and beaten with no arms and no legs by a police officer, by a deputy sheriff. We're outraged about a girl being on stage in a dress that shows her boobs off. We're outraged by some girl thinking as an entrepreneur, showing, taking pictures of herself, trying to make money. But we're not outraged at Amazon, who did not pay any taxes last year. It, it is said that for you to make the money that Jeff Bezos has made, guess what? You would have had to be earning $5,000 a day from the time Christopher Columbus came to the new world to now. So multiply $5,000 per day at 365 and then by, by the number of years since 1492 to 2019. That's what it would take to make the kind of money that Jeff Bezos has made. I want you to think about that. Because until you begin to see that the problem lies in the power structure and the problem lies in the tax structure, we're not going to see this as something that we ourselves need to change. And we, the adjustments we need to make are uh, start simple. We're buying houses we can barely afford. Why are you buying a house for $400,000 when you earn $100,000 a year? How much is your mortgage going to be? Think about that. Think about it. Have, yeah, keep it up. Thanks, my friend. Thanks for coming back, right? Amazon hasn't paid taxes ever. They recently began showing a profit a couple years ago. Oh my God, right? My goodness, think about it, my friends. Think about it. Thanks so much for stopping by, right? But think about it. We've got to start thinking differently. You need to go buy a house. I don't care if the house costs you $100 or $500, go buy it and start fixing it up. That's yours. Move into it and live in it. 
we we start thinking we need to live in a better neighborhood. But well, what the hell is a better neighborhood? If you move into it, that makes it a better neighborhood. Start cleaning up the front yard. Start putting up a, a, a coat of paint on it and see how the neighbors will start looking around like, you know what, I feel self-conscious, let me do the same thing. I ask, I ask people that all the time, you're comfortable, because I was one of them, right? So I was paying $1,200 a month for rent. My mother asked me if I were crazy. She warned me that the day and time would come for accountability, and when it came, I wasn't ready for it. And she said, I told you. She said, go take the money you have and go buy a house and fix it up. You'll be better off. I didn't listen. I listen now because a house is a house. When I go home, I go into my house and inside of it is pretty and it is nice. I own it. My name's still on the title. Do you see what I'm saying? Whereas people I know, they're big pimping like crazy. I mean, they're bawling every day. They're driving Mercedes. They're driving uh, uh, Jaguars. They're big pimping. I'm like, do you own the house? They're paying mortgage. They have to rent out parts of the house to keep the mortgage, but they're big pimping every day. They live on credit. And their friends think they're living the life of Riley. And I'm like, if you don't make any money for the next month, what would you do? And they're like, oh shit, I would collapse. I'm like 30 days without making money and you would collapse. I'm like, wow. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you absolutely see my point of view? And this is where you and I come in and this is where we have to change. You, we got to change. The system is not set up to benefit us. If you run into overdraft on your bank account, don't you pay $35 or $36? It was Obama, I think, who brought it in. I found that out about a year ago. It was Obama who brought it in that if your account is under $5, they won't charge you $36. Uh, you can join my broadcast, honey. Just join it every day, right? Go to Spotify. If you have Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts and subscribe so you can get notifications when I'm on the air. Because the stuff I talk about, nope, I inherited my house. They left it to me. My mother died and left it to me. And I moved out of the high paying rent I was paying. I moved right into her house. Moved right into the house she left me. I've been happier since see. No wrinkles, no stress. You know where that comes from? <laughs> not having to pay you know it right <laughs> right i kid you not i had to re-examine what i was looking at right i i uh sure just 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 do your thing right i had to just and comment just comment so we can see it everybody can see it right and i had to rethink the way that i was looking at it see most of us we said we want to be a millionaire you know that's not i want to be a billionaire so bad right i want to be on the cover of forbes magazine stand next to oprah and the queen we all want that but with the tax laws today it's favorable because after you start making money after a certain ceiling you don't pay eight you don't pay taxes on the 80 percent so you know what most people do is they put their money into the 80% that is non-taxed. It's unbelievable. What are we creating? A society of oligarchs where there's a, a billionaire class, a billionaire, even for some people who think now, well, I'm valued at 250 million, so I'm untouchable. I need you to go back and think about it. In a few years, your next generation won't be. Think about that, right? Thanks, right? 